Hi, this is Amber from DSA Threads, and this evening I thought I would talk to you a little bit about supportive layers. For the competition, I made a imbusto. And it's hanging and flapping open, so you can't see any of it. Which is actually a separate thing that goes on over the kamicha and historically was really just meant to keep you warm and then maybe provide just a tiny amount of structure. I remember starting this journey into making historical costumes and I was like, oh, well, it's corset, right? No. <laughs> I think that's the first assumption is like, okay, well, everything's got to be locked in place and solid and straight and yes you do see that you do see um very straight looking stuff in some portraits from the time you do also see curvature in women's bodies and so we're going to talk a little bit about all the various different ways that women used supportive garments what those looked like etc one of the great resources that i use is moda a firenze which is a wonderful book by insert name of person here because I can't remember it myself. And the great thing about that book is they, they go through what women wore in the Florentine court at the time of Eleonora di Toledo and after that, slightly before that. I also went to the back of the book and looked through the inventories and you can actually see all the different names for these garments. There are basically what I made, which is fitted, it looks like stays, but it's not, called an imbusto. And then the imbusto with a skirt attached to it, which then becomes the satana. Satanas become decorative later on. I kind of get confusing as to whether or not the satana is just an undergarment or an undergown, or if it's actually its own beautifully decorated thing, which we see in lots of portraits as well. Then there is another version of the supportive layer with either a wrapped piece of linen around just the midsection or side layer and it's just a band they use to hide glue. Cardboard, but it's not the cardboard that we know of today, padded things like with wool in order to create stiffness and support the metal corsets, corsets that we see. Eleonora di Toledo, she had something going on with her back where she needed to wear something very rigid to keep it straight. We can't really look at that as evidence for what most women did. So I ended up going for the imbusto, um, which is what I'm gonna show you now, how I made it. And that's my long-winded explanation. <laughs> The first thing I did was draft a pattern and then I traced it onto my cotton velveteen. Then I cut out pieces of wool that I'm going to pad stitch for padding. Here I am pad stitching. Here's the back side of the pad stitching. And then I went in ahead and wrapped those pieces of cotton velveteen around the interlining. Here I am stitching it down. This is my first try on with hook and eye tape. And then I'm just adding the lining here of linen. Here's the finished product. I really love it. Feel free to subscribe, it really helps. We'll see you next time. I'm just sad because I have this beautiful green velvet chair and it never makes it into the frame.